Architecture is both an art and a science, and the process of building buildings is technically incredibly complicated, because first and foremost they have to function, they have to work, but we also aspire for them to be beautiful. So it's, it's really a, about ways in which you can explore those kind of softer sides of what architecture can and should do. And the interesting thing for us about doing the first commission was it's an opportunity to strip away a lot of the um, technical complexity, the, the functional, a lot of the functional sides of making a building work and start to simply explore those other kind of relationships and how do people respond to space, to objects, to structure, to light. The opportunity to identify an emerging architectural practice and partner them with an emerging artist practice was just a fantastic way of sparking some new thinking and I, you know, I'm sort of excited to see what comes out of that process. In its true, true meaning of the word, um, Atta means indivisible and uh, so we wanted to try and create an architecture which was somehow indivisible, kind of going down to the, the, the smallest element or, or a part of the work which was um, you couldn't, couldn't be subtracted. And the same way with the people as well, that, that the groups of people would come together and create something which is greater than the sum of its parts. And so that, that was really the, the idea for, for Atomic. There were definitely some common aims about projects like this, really. We wanted to be able to do kind of cultural projects. We wanted to be doing temporary installations, um, as well as you know, kind of traditional architectural roles. And we've managed to do it. We've been, it's been two and a half years. We've had a few projects like this, we have a few more coming, but run in parallel with sorting out door details on site with a contractor and trying to get something through the planning system. <laughs> in architecture it takes so long to get anything built that actually um, the, the, the reason for doing these, these projects is kind of twofold. One, it kind of allows us to test ideas fairly quickly. So in terms of research, use, looking at materials or using you know, particular details for example or construction methods. You can kind of push the materials you use and the way that you use them, which I think feeds back into the, the more kind of permanent solutions of, of the buildings that we look at. Understanding details, mm. understanding how materials come together and how they kind of, how people interact with them and how they kind of age over a period. And it, it was a great brief to be able to kind of do a true collaboration with an artist. Yeah, it was really exciting. What I'm interested in in terms of performance and theatre of the everyday and how we're always sort of feeding off other people or our surroundings in terms of how we behave and, and even architecture and, and the differences within private space and public space. All the elements in the construction of performance and film all kind of became quite an important part of what the work became about and how we might represent emotions or how misalignments between what we're thinking and then how we represent it to others and then again how then that's perceived by other people and how, how that all kind of changes and gets diluted in a kind of Chinese whispers way or something. Well don't turn your back on me! Or what? Well I'm finding you the plot! You wait and see! Come off it, there was hardly a plot in the first place! And so how we kind of live these experiences a lot of the time through cinema or television or literature and how we kind of borrow and learn from from those models in a way but then how they also kind of they're obviously sort of learning and trying to borrow from real life and um and then how the, they kind of feed off each other in this way that kind of comes a, almost like a heightened experience so in my work I'm, i try to I like that construction somehow. So a lot of the sketches, a lot of the early sketches, they started to think about how we might configure the space, whether it's over one level or whether it's over two levels. How could you get multiple viewpoints of, um, of the same thing? One of the first things we did was build a model of the, of the space and to try and understand the three-dimensionality of it, the, the heights and the, you know, the, the scale. Some of these models we've made for this project are 
very quick, very rough, but they kind of capture an idea that you can start to talk to each other about and develop. At the same time, there's a script evolving. There's a kind of a narrative of, of, of going back to that performance of how people are in different spaces. A narrative that linked to it back to itself, so there was no beginning or end. And that started to get translated into the route between these spaces, that there wasn't necessarily a beginning or an end. You could continuously go around. And then because the script, the idea of the script being written on the inside of these spaces meant that they became a circular in plan, at least to continue that continue that text. You could read around the room and not realise that you've gone quite back to the beginning. Yeah, so the script and the and the space and the performance, they're all developed, they're all developed simultaneously. I think that the, 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 there were things that we did individually, but they, they all kind of came out of a uh, out of the sense of this co-authored piece of work that we you know we all discussed all the different constituent parts. It's definitely felt like like we were all involved in every element. It's been interesting to see where it does actually kind of correspond quite a lot. Not just because I make performances or installations that sort of respond to space or kind of architecture, but also just in a kind of more social way. How like architecture kind of paces your experience. Each of the spaces are a different sizes, different heights, different different widths. And, and that there are places where you, might, you may want to linger that you'll get glimpses of other things from inside and from the outside. You know, each of these objects has, has its own role and there's an audio element that comes out and actually when you're in another one you can still hear the others talking. They're, they are synced to, to appear to be discussing things between them and then the, kind of, the chorus that is the space in between links them all and feeds into all of them. What's your position? I forget. Your position? Yes, sometimes I forget. There will be a series of live feed videos within the space that the performers will have the opportunity to manipulate, but these could be quite abstract, so they may not, it may not be immediately apparent to the viewer who, you know, whether they're looking at something which is live or whether they're looking at something which is pre-recorded. It could be quite difficult to discern, and other times it may be very obvious. Those moments will be essentially a bit, a bit like entering a film set, I think. So, yeah, kind of playing on a slippage between the, the viewer and the performer, it being in a very kind of highly constructed space or scenario. It's yeah, kind of attempting to sort of create a, almost like a sort of heightened sense of um, awareness or self-awareness somehow, and awareness of the surroundings or the different senses or elements that or how they're sort of impacting your experience. So kind of at the same time as it being this kind of attempt of trying to manipulate experience, it's simultaneously attempting to expose to the, that audience what, what it is that, or well, how it is that it's manipulating. So the title, it's not who you are, it's how you are. There's this sort of multiple meaning or kind of readings that, that I enjoy. And that, it's like a line that's very familiar. We've all heard different kind of variations of it's not this, it's that, whether it's like self-help books or you might see on like t-shirts or something and I think I quite like the profoundness of it um, the more something is used almost the more it kind of loses its kind of meaning or kind of sentiment that's something I'm always interested in in terms of yeah, the use of cliche there's a, there's a constant balancing act I think going on with like sincerity and irony in the, in the, in the piece as well where um, I think we're kind of lost within it as well. 